So, what to do with today with baby? Hi. I just fed her right now. Some, whatever those, little soup. Hey. What to do today? Something is finally here. What's up? So one of the perks of being a sneakerhead is being able to sell your shoes at a pretty reasonable price. Um, if you keep the conditions of your shoes right, sometimes you lose money, sometimes you, you gain money whenever you buy shoes. I had to sell some Bread 11s, it had a scuff on it, so I had to sell them for pretty cheap. I sold my Bread 4s. Right now I'm currently selling some um, Royal 1s right now. Uh, you know, I don't want to let those go, but anyways, sometimes you just got to clean house and go ahead and get rid of some stuff. But um, I've been really waiting, waiting. I mean, I really wanted this lens. Um, if you guys know, um, hobbies change and sneakers, sometimes they come around and they remake them again. So it's kind of like, dude, I'm not really missing out on anything. Um, you know, I, I had a pretty nice collection. It was a good run, but uh, you know, um, instead of trying to buy something for 600 bucks, I went out and uh, sold some shoes. But uh, let's get into it because I've been really excited about this um, this lens. This is gonna set the, the the big boys from the little ones. I don't know why, but if I ever get in a knife fight, I would want this knife, little pairing knife, whatever these are called. I don't know why. I think it's just because like I can maneuver. I would never get a knife fight, but uh, you know, martial arts, um, I would rather have this little knife. I don't know why, but anyways, so let's do this. It is Tamron 24 to 70, 2.8. What separates this one from the Canon one is this has BC, which is vibration control or image stabilization for um, for Canon. But uh, let's, let's look into it. Okay, this guy did original packaging and everything. The only flaw about this, he said there was a little scratch and I can't wait to see that. Oh my gosh, this thing's like a, oh yes. Look at this big boy. I don't even know if I want to be carrying this thing around. Look at that big thing. I think it's huge compared to my hand. I have a pretty big hand. I can't even wrap my hand around it. This thing is huge. I'm so excited. As vibration, vibration control and auto focusing right there. Okay. So he said there was a scratch on the lens. I don't even see the scratch, like honestly. And the guy. Oh, there it is. I see the scratch. It's not even that bad. I think I can get rid of that scratch. What they said to do with these scratches, you take a little rubbing alcohol, microfiber towel. Anyways, all right. I'm gonna test this bad boy out, go play around. Um, thanks for watching, guys. So, I wanted to answer this age old question um, where did God come from? Where did God come from? Well, that's a very difficult question that I have a comfortable answer. I, I like to use the word comfortable, comfortable answer to me. Um, and it's educated, It's I think it's educated. And it came from when I had to write a paper. Um, if you guys know that I'm in, I'm, I'm in college again, um, I'm in Bible college again. And uh, cause I'm trying to finish my degree. I was a Bible school dropout, so. Um, so now to try to finish my degree and get my BA in um, biblical studies. But anyway, so I came up with this this um, good little understanding of where God came from. Um, I don't want to say theory because um, I just don't want to use that term. But anyways, there, there are five classical arguments that um, prove the existence of God. And so 
a lot of us actually Christians you use this um, argument a lot and you just don't realize it like um, the ontological argument is one of them I'm not gonna go over that that one's kind of difficult to understand the cosmological argument now this argument um, establishes that um, the universe is so intricate and it's um, it couldn't have been created as some big old big big bang theory and or whatever and um, and it needs to be sustained and only a god can do that and then there's like the teleological argument which which basically it nature is so beautiful and it's so you know amazing that there has to be a creator that made it so there's things like that and then there's like the moral argument um, and the aesthetic argument and you know, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just to answer this question, where did God come from? Um, when we take arguments like this, I uh, started thinking of, of where did God come from? And if you think about where did God come from, what we really start to do is try to put God into a box, or he's, I, he's, he's, you, you try to put God into um, a, li a limited kind of thing. You, you try to put God and in, in limit him because human understanding only knows so much. We only know like this. And God's understanding if he's the supreme being is like way big out here. So for us to try to answer that question as a human would be absurd, would actually be insulting God because number one, he's the supreme being. And if you try to answer this question, what we all, all we really know, I mean, us as, as Christians and humans, us as humans, we only know this much. I mean, um, if we try to answer that question, what we'd be trying to say is like, okay, well, God had to come from something because we're made out of his, of his image. As it says in the Bible, we're made out of his, of his image. And so us, the, the only evidence that we know of us is that we are created us as humans are created. I was created because I had a pair. I had a. I had a mother and father, and um, you know, they had a mother and father, and they and they're on and that and that you know whole uh, reproduce you know uh, reproducing thing and, and all all that. Um, we start to think of God like that and saying you know because that's the only evidence and then the only evidence in the Bible of a spiritual being making a spiritual being is is God creating Jesus and that was not even like. That was so divine in itself, and, and, and um, that's the only thing we have as evidence. And, but if we start to think of, think like that, we're gonna say that God is not the supreme being; that there's a, there's a being greater than Him. So what we're doing is we're we're even. If we start to answer that question, um, and, and we start to go that route, what we're doing is we're telling God, okay, you already told us that there are no other gods before you. Um, so what we're saying is that there could be a supreme being bigger than you? No way, man. Um, that would that kind of thing would be absurd as a Christian. So for us to try to answer that question would be a big no-no to me. Uh, that's my opinion. I would not try to answer that question because I'll be insulting my God. So two things I have to say that I'm comfortable with is one, um, God's God's origin is bigger than my understanding. That's number one. And number two, I don't want to try to answer that question because I'd, I'd probably be insulting my, my great God because he's the supreme being and there's no other uh, gods before him. So there's my answer of where God created, where God, God um, came from, okay? I hope you're comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that. Um, I, I like that answer because of the fact that it, it, it still leaves God in such a big, like, He's limitless, you know. I mean, when, when we start to think of that, he's not limited to anything. And um, if we start to answer that question, try to answer that question, then we're limiting God because he's bigger than he's bigger than anything that I ever know. So, all right, love you guys. Um, subscribe, um, share this this video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, God bless. Some people that that's a lot to me. Um, thank you for all your support. I just want to um, ask you to continue to keep me in prayer as I keep you guys in prayer. And uh, love you guys. God bless.